Hello and welcome to this review of the Victorian Rebels Romance Book Series by Kerrigan Byrne. I'm Olivia, your new favorite resource for book recommendations you can easily screenshot, and you're watching Random Olive Reads. So first up, uh, this is a series I highly recommend reading in order. The timeline follows one after another and the characters are very closely intertwined. So we start with The Highwaymen and this is book one of the series. Now the prologue starts very tragic. We have two young kids in an orphanage who befriend each other, teach each other how to read, help with sneaking each other food, protecting each other, and we eventually have a very sweet little childhood wedding in the chapel before tragedy strikes. So the girl is attacked by a priest, and then the boy kills the priest and is sent to prison. Fast forward Many years later, our girl is a widow working at the police station, and the most notorious criminal in London gets dragged in. He sees her, he wants her, and so when the opportunity arises, he kidnaps her and takes her to his Scottish castle to marry. Now, we have a lot of high drama and angst in this one, probably one of the darkest series in kind of the historical romance genre. The Hunter is book two of the series. The prologue here starts just as dark as the one before, with our very young Christopher being the child growing up in a prison. He witnesses his mother being attacked in their prison cell, and this pretty much starts his evil, no good trajectory in life. Now, he's hired to kill a stage actress, Millie, for unknown reasons, but it doesn't really matter to him because he's doing it for the money. He finds himself completely distracted and unable to finish the job when he first, meet, first meets her. And then when he seeks her out later, he's, only, he's thwarted when he realizes that she's a single mother. We start a back and forth of her trying to avoid him and also entangle herself with him. Eventually, we uncover the mystery of why Millie is being targeted, and it sets us up for more of the rest of the series. The Highlander is book three of the series. Now, in this one, I don't know who has the sadder backstory, Liam or Mina. So Liam had grown up with an abusive father and learned violence and terror as his heir. He's got issues with his brother. He had a late wife with mental issues, mental health issues who died after jumping off a balcony. Meanwhile, Mina has been committed to an insane asylum by her abusive husband and is rescued by friends she made from the first two books of the series. So she is being sent off to become a governess to Liam's teenage children so that she can hide from her husband. Now, Liam and Mina are almost instantly attracted to each other and slowly get to know each other while Mina is growing closer to Liam's children. Of course, she's got this big secret with her identity, so there will be drama when that finally gets revealed. This book also has some hints towards Jane Eyre themes with some mysterious events happening around the castle. And really, I think this book was my favorite of the series with its brash and burly hero and vulnerable heroine who learns to find her own strength. The Duke is book four of the series. So with this one, I, I feel like the blurb on the back of the book was a little bit misleading. I, at first, I thought it was an amnesia book, but it's not. So our girl Imogen is working at um, a brothel as a maid, and she's actually a nurse by day. And when Cole and his men are at the bar or brothel, he requests her services for the night, even though she's supposed to just be the maid. She's not actually a courtesan. Uh, sometime later, she He's injured from the war and in the hospital where she works as a nurse. He's a terrible, belligerent patient, and she ultimately saves his life, but he doesn't recognize her at all, mostly because she was wearing makeup and a wig at the brothel, etc. Um, while Cole is being a bad patient, Imogen gets into a bit of trouble and is preparing to run away. A sickly old Viscount takes pity on her, and they enter into a marriage of convenience. So fast forward a few more years, more time jumping, and Imogen is now a wealthy widow living independently. Unfortunately, she crosses paths with Cole again, with him thinking that she's a gold digger for marrying his elderly neighbor. 
he's also been dreaming and looking for the girl from the brothel that he spent that single night with. So then we see kind of what happens as these two grow close again, if Cole ever realizes who's right in front of him, etc. And then there's kind of a murderer tossed into the plot as well. Book five is The Scott Beds His Wife. Gavin is the younger brother of Liam from book three and had the same tragic upbringing with an abusive father. In trying to separate himself from this Mackenzie clan legacy, he sets out to run his own farm and estate, but he needs to acquire a prime piece of land to do so. So he writes to the current landowner, who has been in America all these years, to try to reach a bargain. Well, that lady has met Samantha on the train and strikes a deal with her. Sam will go to Scotland, Scotland, pretend to be her, lay claim to the land, and prevent Gavin and any other Mackenzie from getting access. Now, of course, these two with their antagonistic relationship end up married instead, and we're just waiting for the drama to unfold of Sam's true identity and who really has rights to this land. Book six is The Duke with the Dragon Tattoo, and we have our true amnesia story here. Left for Dead, a young man with no memory whatsoever, is rescued by Lorelai's family and nursed back to health. As they grow closer, she names the man Ash, and that guy is eventually betrayed by Lorelai's brother and shipped away. After a decade or more, Lorelai is about to get married, and then she is kidnapped on her wedding day by a criminal notoriously known as the Rook. The Rook is really Ash, of course, and he still has no memory of his time before Lorelai rescued him. He's finally come to claim her, make her his wife, etc. Along the way, we start to find out the backstory of the Rook, and how he's connected to the other men of the Victorian Rebel series. This is really interesting, and again, the reason why this series really needs to be read in order. Next up, we have Seducing a Stranger, which is book seven of the series. This was previously published as A Dark and Stormy Night, and also serves as book one of the Good Girl series. We start with a midnight tryst in a garden between our gal Prudence and the good inspector while he's there trying to investigate a case. Uh, Fast forward to the inspector's boss's daughter's wedding where the groom is stabbed to death before the ceremony and the bride is holding the knife and covered in blood. And oh wait, she was the inspector's one night stand way back when. And she's pregnant. If that's not drama, I I don't know what is. This happens in like the first 20% of the book, and then it all goes downhill or uphill from there, depending on your interests. And then we have The Earl on the Train. This is book eight of the series. This is a novella-length story originally published in the Big Duke Energy Anthology. We have our sort of sidekicks from The Duke with the Dragon Tattoo, who meet again on the train. He is set on attacking a gentleman on the train journey, and she is traveling with that guy's daughter, and the chemistry between these two really started in the previous book, so this novella makes more sense after having read that one. This one's a pretty short, quick read. Overall, I really like this series. I thought it was really entertaining and dramatic and full of angst and emotion, And I'm looking forward to telling you more about Kerrigan Burns' books. Thank you so much for watching this video. Links to all the books I've discussed are in the description box. Like and subscribe so you don't miss future videos. And you can follow me on Instagram at randomolive.